sponsored by Native. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and in today's vlog, I am answering your juicy questions about makeovers, answering the question that I get so much, where is Chico, who pays for makeovers, how my business funds itself. All of your burning questions that you ask me over on Instagram are being answered today. Are you guys ready? Let's get started. So the first question is from Sammy. Would love to know how you pick recipients. I would really love to apply. If you are not yet following me on Instagram, do so right now at Alexandra Gator. Anytime we are looking to make over a space, we do a call out on Instagram stories. I would also suggest you turn the little bell on so you get notified anytime I post a story. And in this call out, we ask for a specific space usually, or sometimes we ask if anyone's looking for us to work in a specific style. Sometimes people ask, why does the homeowner not get to choose the style? The homeowner always gets to choose the style unless we do a specific call out. Sometimes I'm just really inspired to try a certain style or try a certain color in a space, which is why we do these specific call outs in case anyone is like, ooh, that resonates with me and I definitely want to have a space that looks like that. I also get the question, can people outside of Toronto apply? It's so cool actually, every single day, either through email or on Instagram DMs, people ask me to come make over their spaces in like Australia or the Philippines, a lot of the times in the United States. And I'm so flattered, but right now we stick to Toronto. That does not mean Hamilton, unfortunately. That rarely means going outside to like Mississauga. Sometimes we will go to Etobicoke, but we really try to stick within the city center. Truly the biggest reason is because we have so much stuff we have to bring with us and traveling far just doesn't make the process super smooth. Probably the most asked question in this Q&A was a variation on, does the recipient pay for the makeover? How do you pay for the makeovers? How do you get paid? How does your team get paid? All of the questions surrounding money. I'm gonna dive into it. I don't know why this feels kind of like vulnerable, but we're gonna answer the questions. So after we pick the recipient, we obviously have to start making their space over, planning. By now you know that I have a team of eight people, including myself, who helps pull these makeovers together in various different ways. And we'll get to what each person on the team does. There's eight people on Team AG. Okay, obviously after we pick the recipient, we have to start planning the makeover and I'll get to that kind of process later on in the video, but I have eight. <laughs> When I've, I've seen the film now twice. But there are seven people, including myself, which is eight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there are seven people plus myself, which is eight people on Team AG who contribute in their own way to making these makeovers come to life. I'll get to their roles later on in this video, but you're probably wondering how my company is able to do this financially. The short answer is no. The recipients of the makeovers don't pay anything. We really treat this as like a gifted opportunity. So they have won something. So when you apply to a makeover, if you get an email for, from us that says, congratulations, you've won a makeover, that is truly what is happening. You are winning an experience with me and my team. The recipient doesn't pay anything. They get to keep everything that's in their space. So I have made a lot of relationships with brands, furniture brands, home decor brands. Over five years, I've built these relationships. Back when I worked in publishing, transitioning into my YouTube career. So I have a lot of relationships with brands who are willing to send their product to me in exchange for marketing and a feature on our YouTube show. So there are some sponsors who I work with often, like actually today's sponsor, Native Deodorant. I have been using Native Deodorant for years, ever since I started working with them. I've never gone back. And now Native Deodorant comes in this new and improved packaging. It's earth friendly and 100% plastic free. It uses the exact same formula as their regular deodorant, but comes in this more sustainable and earth friendly packaging. The thing I love about Native Deodorant is that it is not sticky. It keeps me feeling fresh all day long, especially when we're on set doing makeovers. I've converted my whole family to using Native. They always use my code when Native Deodorant sponsors a video. I also love that it is aluminum free. It's also cruelty free, vegan, paraben free, and it uses simple ingredients that everyone knows and loves like coconut oil and shea butter. 
So right now, my favorite scents are coconut and vanilla. I've been using this for a few months. But sometimes I also like using the lavender and rose. I love how Native Deodorant offers so many different scents that are also tailored to like certain seasons, like fall or winter. It's always fun to just see what new scents there are and pick a new one to try and like add in to my daily routine. Of course, I have a discount code for you. So normally three plastic free deodorants would be $39, but if you use my link in the description box and my code, which is Gator7, you can get three plastic free deodorants for $26. That is over 33% off. Also, you can use my code for 20% off any body wash or toothpaste. Let's get back to all those juicy questions about the makeover process. There's obviously costs that come with the makeovers that my company fronts. So hardware, tools, labor, my team who is there on makeover day, Carla who is shooting the videos, James and Alessandra who edit them afterwards. I'm able to pay for my team and the labor and those extra kind of costs that are incurred. Doing these makeovers through things like brand deals, that's when a brand pays for an advertisement on my channel. AdSense. AdSense is, you know, a really big part of my business. So AdSense comes from YouTube. Ads are served to you throughout the videos that you watch on this channel, and I make AdSense money from that. Social campaigns, social partnerships with brands, also other opportunities with brands off of YouTube and off of social media. So maybe I show up to a shoot and a brand pays me to be kind of like a face of that advertisement. I also have an e-commerce business over on my website. That also makes money as well. So there's a lot of different revenue streams, I think. People just see the YouTube videos, but there's so much more to it than that. One thing that I did early on in my business was I put all of my money back into the business. So it's obviously my job, but I've treated it more as like a company and a corporation that pays me and all of my team a salary. So a lot of YouTubers like daily vloggers or family vloggers, they might put that money back into their family and their lives. For me, I put it all back into my business. So I'm able to hire people and grow my business slowly but also quickly as the years kind of progress. Running this kind of business also comes with a lot of costs like insurance. Insurance is huge. We're going into people's homes, we're making them over. Transportation, so people's parking, my car, food on set, that's a huge one. I feed my team when we're on set because often the days are really long. We're not breaking for a long time. It's go, go, go. If you've ever worked on a set, you know what that set life is like. And then of course, like all those little costs, little accessories last minute that we haven't thought of until we're in the space and realize we, we need them. We feel really lucky to go into people's spaces and do this as a job. It's like the most amazing feeling when we go into people's homes and you know they appreciate the process so much as well. I get a lot of questions about how I built my business. If you guys are interested in learning more about that, I feel like that could be a whole video. It would be a video that I'd have to like really think about because I think I've just kind of been like, on for like full three full years and I have to stop and think about how I actually did it. Let me know in the comments down below and maybe that's a video we'll do in the future. I think there's a lot of mystery surrounding YouTubers because everyone approaches this differently I find. Some people have a big team, some people have no team at all, some people you don't know if they have a team. For me I've always approached this as wanting to build a mini like home decor network and I knew early on that to do that I was gonna have to build a team. There was so, so many hours by myself, so many hours with just Alana, my first ever employee, schlepping and sitting at my computer for like 15 hours a day and handling everything by myself. But then I had an opportunity in 2019 to early 2020 with Shopify and I did a whole other series with them. I launched a whole other channel and that opportunity helped me financially be able to hire Alana full time, my first employee, and then kind of start to hire others. And I also saw how Shopify worked. We did that show with a whole crew and it made the process so much easier. So I was able to say like in my mind, that's what I want. That's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to grow my channel in the same way. Every YouTuber approaches it differently and this is the way I've approached it and not to say it's easy or always like go swimmingly but I've had a lot of awesome opportunities come my way and I've also had the outlook of wanting to grow this to be bigger and better with each makeover. The next question is from Sarah Marr and she asks how does Team AG divide up tasks? So let's just go I guess let's think of this as like a tree or like a family tree. Everything starts with myself and Amanda. So Amanda 
is the COO of my company. We basically deal with stuff like finances, hiring, operations. I have these big picture creative ideas and I say those to Amanda, either through text messages, Slack messages, voice notes, or phone calls, every form of communication. And she makes it happen on like an operational level. We work really well together because I think very creatively and Amanda is like reality. Like how do we actually make this happen? Is this possible? Do we have enough money? Do we have enough people? Do we have enough time? Amanda also deals with all the schedules. So scheduling when editors are going to edit projects. She deals with scheduling of makeovers of when Alana is gonna go scout a space, when I am going to sit down and start planning makeovers or talking to recipients or working on all the other creative projects that I have going on behind the scenes that I'm not allowed to tell you about. Amanda also talks to our brand partners and helps facilitate brand deals and basically is the one who says, okay, we have a brand deal, here's the video it's gonna go in, here's the work back schedule, here's timing, all of those things. Wow, when I actually, say your job out loud, that sounds intense. So the next person I would say, the next step the business goes to is Alana. Alana is our creative producer here at Team AG and she handles the makeover part of the business. So Alana is the one who will do call outs on Instagram. Alana and I work really closely to figure out like, okay, what style do we wanna tackle? Or what series do we wanna do this month? Or is there something we're really inspired by that we want to feature on the channel? Together, we are constantly just sharing ideas and creatively thinking, you know, what are we gonna do in the following months? Once we decide what the makeovers are gonna be, Alana starts scouting. We talk before she scouts a space. We say, okay, which spaces do we think are gonna be great to make over? And we have a lot of meetings to talk about which spaces Alana actually wants to go and scout and see in person. There's like so many steps before we actually choose someone or actually get into their space and make it over. So then Alana and Graham will go together to scout the space. They report back to me and then we have another conversation and we really determine the space we want to make over. So then the next step is I get on a call with the person who has won the makeover. I come up with a really loose kind of plan. So then I pass on all those notes and all my initial ideas and thoughts to Alana and Alana will actually go in and create a working mood board with products we can actually call in or purchase. And then after that, there's obviously a lot of conversations in between, so I'm approving things. It's a process, it's a true design process. We're going back and forth. So then Alana will start calling in from brands, which basically means that she'll ask if they'd like their furniture to be featured in the episode, or we will purchase things if we need to. And we basically start to like get the makeover happening by sending all the furniture and accessories to the homeowner. Wow, we're still not done. Okay, Alana is also managing all the deliveries, talking to the homeowner, making sure things have arrived, basically managing this makeover that's gonna happen in six to eight weeks and making sure that on the day, we are prepared as a team to make this makeover happen in two to three days. Graham comes in, and if you are wondering what has happened to Chico, because that is the question I get a lot in my DMs, don't worry. That's coming. Graham will start to DIY projects. So Graham and I will chat on the side about what DIYs we want to have in the space. Alana will also obviously come with ideas as the creative producer. And the three of us will come up with projects that Graham can do to make our makeovers even more custom and special. So while things are getting called in, Graham is shopping for lumber, planning his projects, making them happen, and working off site to build these custom pieces. Carla is our videographer. So Carla is only with us very, very part time. She shoots the makeovers and she's only usually there, actually almost always only there on the last day, the day we reveal the space to the homeowner. She shoots the makeover reveal, she shoots after, she shoots photos, she basically shoots the last full day of a makeover. The footage gets passed on to my editors, Alessandra and James. So Amanda is facilitating that footage handover and Alessandra and James, dream team, basically make these episodes come to life. So the episodes that you guys love to watch, that is all due to Alessandra and James working with the hours of footage we give them and just making something magical. Making a literal AGTV episode. Alessandra is also editing TikTok footage, real footage, all of our vlogs. She also is organizing footage. So getting the footage, making some sort of timeline out of it. I'm talking about this as if I know 
what a video editor's computer screen looks like. I do, kind of. And she's basically picking like the best moments in a video for James to edit into the full episode. And James exclusively just handles YouTube videos. So he takes Alessandra's kind of skeleton of the video and then puts his kind of twist and magic touch on it and does everything from adjusting audio levels, color, putting in the memes that you guys love, and like creating a story out of the hours of footage that we have. So when a makeover's done, it then goes on to a couple other team members. So myself and our social media coordinator, Neve, will figure out, okay, how do we want to promote this video on Instagram? How do we want the stories to look? How do we want the reels to look? And Neve does everything from like creating newsletters to creating stories to shooting reels to just like creating all of this other content to support the long form YouTube video. She also helps us with virtual makeover package launches, updating the website. There's so many steps and there's so many people involved, but I hope that by breaking this down, you guys can understand why this business needs so many people and how everyone contributes like so beautifully to making these 40 minute episodes come to life and how that really excitingly like expands off of YouTube and really all goes to support this like bigger brand. So that brings me to the next question. This was asked by Stacy. How did you meet Graham? He is a great addition to the AG team. Which also funnels into another question that was asked, where is Chico? <laughs> So I'm gonna answer this in two parts. First of all, Chico, if you are a new viewer, worked with me on my Shopify series, Make My Space Work. That's how I met him. And Chico is a really, really awesome person. He is a creative art director. He works on really big commercial sets. Chico is a very, very busy person. The Shopify project was a long-term project that he helped us on. And so he was there consistently. And he started to help me with my videos because I realized I really need a contractor on site. So Chico Chico is helping us part-time and we love him so much. I know you guys love him as well. You might remember around this time last year, he hurt his hand pretty badly. It was a day before a makeover. He was in the emergency room. He had to get a ton of stitches. I actually think he needed surgery on his hand. We realized we had to find someone to help us in the interim quickly. So that is when Graham literally just poofed into thin air. Just kidding, he did not. We found Graham in a condo group on Facebook. One of Amanda's friends had recommended we reach out to him. We were kind of nervous. And so we started working with Graham and just quickly realized like how incredibly talented he is at woodworking, at installing things, at like building things from scratch. I kind of suddenly realized like, okay, this is the missing piece to my business. So Graham has been working with us part-time. So he'll come on set with us and then a couple days a week, he will build the projects for the makeovers. But I'm really excited to announce that Graham actually, as of next Monday, is joining Team AG full-time. So he's worked with me part-time for about a year and we all love working with him. I think he really loves working with us and we might have like a Team AG workshop in the works where Graham is gonna be working to build these amazing projects. As I'm talking this out too, I'm like realizing that building this business has been such an evolution and also has been a learning experience for me because when I started, I was doing all the jobs that everyone here does now, but on a very, very small scale. So obviously the makeovers were not even close to what they are now, but it's always just been like a dream of mine and a goal of mine to be able to have a mini home decor show that I produce exclusively in-house. Having Graham was just that missing piece because it just allows me to be able to do so many cool, big, different things. So yeah. Round of applause. And yay Chico! Chico, if you're watching, we love you, we miss you. We love Chico so much and I know you guys love Chico. Chico is doing so great. He has like his own full-blown company. He works with huge brands to literally art direct and produce their shoots. And so he wasn't always available for us to, you know, be on set with us because he's working with these like amazing, cool brands with these like really big opportunities. Sometimes he'd be on set for like two weeks at a time working on a project. And I started to realize like, okay, I need someone who's available at least three days a week, probably more. And it all just kind of happened the way it was supposed to and all kind of fell into place. Chico's okay. Chico's good. Chico's great. The next question comes from Rymos and they ask, on average, how long does a makeover take? Starting from picking recipient to completion. So starting from that initial meeting where Alana, Amanda, and I talk about our schedule for the following months, 
to the day we reveal the space to the makeover recipient, we are talking about eight to 10 weeks, which is a long time, but there are so many things that go into each makeover. Plus, we're also all working on three other makeovers at the same time. Like it's not just one, we're doing a cluster of makeovers because content on the internet never ends. It keeps going and we have to just constantly be like creating content. There's also been a couple questions about our posting schedule and you know, one of the sacrifices I had to make when deciding that I wanted these makeovers to be bigger and better over 30 minutes long was that we were gonna have to produce less of them because it is not possible, even with this many people, to bring out the quality of content we do every single Saturday. It's just not, not possible. Work-life balance is very important here at Team AG. So we do about three to four videos a month on my channel. The next question, is asked by Kato Vandersteen. How do you keep a healthy work-life balance? Okay, the word balance, I feel like is such a buzzword. I don't actually know if like balance is ever gonna be possible. I feel like in my world, I've created healthy boundaries when it comes to work. So I really try to end my day at 5.30. I think we, we all do in this office. Building that structure for my team that consists of a nine to five was a really great way to kind of retrain my mind to think like you have a full-time job that is a nine to five job. When I was in my early days working by myself, I was constantly working because I was doing everything and I felt like as an entrepreneur, I had to do that. Like I, I had to always be working and I feel like that less so now. I do, don't get me wrong, work a lot. Like I'll go home and I'll work on things. On the weekends, I'll try and catch up, but it's mostly things that are like enjoyable to me, like creative ideas that I want to launch long-term. Also launching the videos on Saturday mornings. I do that myself. I create the thumbnails, I launch them, I answer comments. And that's obviously something that I love to do and want to keep doing. I don't know. I also feel like really, really, really lucky that this is my job. And so there are some weeks where I'm really tired and burnt out, but I also really try to take care of myself. Like going to get massages and taking time off my phone and reading and yeah. But I've never been someone who just like walks through the world not thinking about my job and my career, but that's a that's been a personal choice for me. Like I, I want to be thinking about that and I want to be kind of coming up with the next big thing we're gonna do here at Team AG. So I also think one of the best things I did for my company and for myself was hire people to help me. Hiring people also means that I'm able to most days go home at 5.30 and have a regular evening at home. Yes, I'm always thinking about work and yes, I'm always writing notes to myself, but that's a personal choice. It's also been a really big transition for me to actually like hire people and realize that I don't have to do everything myself. I've had to kind of like check my ego a few times because at the end of the day, day I started doing this by myself and passing on and delegating tasks to people has been a transition and it will probably continue to be a transition but the amazing trade-off is that I have been able to work on some like bucket list projects that I promise I'm able to announce them soon. I'm able to work on those things and like really make them amazing because I have a team that's supporting me so yeah. The next question is from Emma. Where do clients go in between prep day and makeover day or do they just see all the prep work? Great question, Emma. So no, we treat this as like an actual makeover show that you would see on television. We require the makeover recipients to leave for usually two nights. That means they don't see any of the prep work and the makeover reveal is truly a surprise. We do get furniture shipped to them, but it's all in boxes so they can't see what what's in those boxes. And so in between prep day and makeover day, they usually stay with family or friends. They're always like really willing for it to be a surprise, which is so fun. So we take over their house, they give us the keys, like they literally hand over the keys. We make ourselves at home in their condo, house, apartment, whatever it may be. We do our thing. You guys have seen the videos, you know that prep day is chaos. There's boxes everywhere. Until we actually reveal the space, there is stuff everywhere. It just wouldn't be possible for the recipient to be at home while that process was happening. It really is like a real, real makeover show. This wasn't asked in this particular Q&A box, but I get this question asked all the time. I don't even send it to you guys. Like sometimes I send it to you, 
but like I get so many questions in YouTube comments. E some people email me and they ask, where does See My Light come from? It's been stuck in my head. I can't find the song anywhere. I've Googled it a million times. That is because we invented that you can see my light song. Specifically, Carla came up with this song. Carla one day just said, you can see my light. She's constantly like, oh, you can see my light in the reflection. And then she created a song out of it. And we now all just sing it when she's like, you can see my light, see my light. 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 See my light. See my light. That, that's it, that's just the line. There's no chorus, there's no like, it's just, you can see my, that's it. I um, actually teamed up with an artist, Leandra, who created um, this beautiful illustration called You Can See My Light. It's available on my website, alexandragator.com. It'll be linked down below. It's a digital art print, so you can just print it at home and frame it. I'm really glad that you guys love the song as much as we do. If you guys want a recorded version of You Can See My Light. It wouldn't be anything except You Can See My over and over again. Okay, so someone start a comment in the comments down below that says, petition for You Can See My Light studio single. If that comment gets 30,000 likes, you'll see us in the studio. I know you guys want it. I know you guys want it in your ears. I hope you guys loved all these answers. I loved getting vulnerable with you about business. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you next time. Bye.